And we're taking a look at an over and under double barrel shotgun. And uh, this is a ideal shotgun for both hunting and for taking to the range for trap or skeet. Typically skeet with an over and under. And this is a Bakil, so it's a Russian made uh, over and under. There's definitely better examples of over and under shotguns. I don't want to represent this as the best one out there. So not the worst one out there either, but it's the one that we have available for this demo. So over and under, first off, we'll take a look inside and see that we've got two inert training, or excuse me, snap caps inside, which are nothing more than plastic, pieces of plastic that are the same dimensions as a shotgun shell, in this case 12 gauge. There's a brass sort of plunger with this spring. And what that does is it gives something with a bit of resistance for your firing pins, which are in this face, in the breech face there, a place to, to close it with a little bit more uh, force. And then this, the lever goes back into place. On a double barrel shotgun, you don't want to leave those hammers back in storage. So uh, it gives it a, a, a place to, for those firing pins to hit so that they don't break. So we're going to start out, now that we know that it's not live or anything, we're going to take a look at the front here. And what we're looking at is two shotgun barrels over the other. So over and under shotgun is talking about the barrels. From the side, you can tell it's really nothing more than two long tubes with uh, this thing in the back that allows firing pins to hit the shotgun shells that are shoved into those tubes. They also have screw-in chokes. This one's not very tight. And uh, of course, you would never put your finger in the end of a loaded shotgun, but for this demo, I'm just going to use my finger to unscrew this choke, which is just a cylinder of metal that's shaped like a slight, very slight funnel. Depending on what you're doing, you put different chokes in it. And on a double barrel, you usually have the option of uh, removable chokes, except for on some of the very inexpensive uh, models that are made strictly for hunting, where you almost always want your first barrel to be a wider pattern because that bird is closer and you want to you know you usually have less time to acquire the sight picture so you want a nice big dispersal and then your second barrel is typically uh, anticipating the bird had gotten away with the first shot or the other birds in the group have gotten a chance to get further away from you so now your second barrel is going to have some sort of a choke to compress that group a shot as it's leaving the barrel in order to give you a, a tighter pattern at distance and that would be again to anticipate those birds being further away so usually you have two different types of chokes or if you're playing a, a, a shooting game like skeet uh, you may change that and go with uh, you know whatever option you feel like right now I'm pretty sure I have a, a full choke on the top and probably a modified choke underneath for hunting uh, we've got a ribbed barrel, which just means there's this sort of a piece of strip of metal along the top of my top barrel, which when you're looking down the gun or the shotgun, it gives you a basically a point to aim. And it's, uh, you know, different than shooting a, a rifle because you're shooting at something that's very small and it's typically moving away from you quite fast. So uh, you usually keep both eyes open and move the shotgun you know, anticipating where the thing's going to be, you fire there because it's going to take some amount of time for that projectile to leave your barrel and some amount of time for that target to move into place. So you're basically doing a little bit of math as you shoot. And uh, because of that, you don't have a typical rifle sight or a two dot sight like you would on a, a two position sight like you would on a fire, like a rifle with a rear sight and a front sight. In this case, you have like mo usually they do just a bead out front to kind of give you some point of reference where your tip of your barrel is, but it really becomes, for me at least, it's just feeling. I've been doing it for so long that uh, I don't think about how I'm aiming. It just sort of is more of an instinctive type of thing. So coming back, we've got the takedown. Uh, when you take apart a, a double barrel side by side or up and down, you almost always have this lever here, and that's just to take the barrels off for cleaning. And for maintenance, I'm not going to bother with that. This isn't an instructional video, it's just an overview. Uh, as we move back though, you usually only have a couple of things, a couple of control levers on a, in a shotgun like this. And that's of course the trigger, and then the, the lever to open it, and then the safety. Uh, on this one, the lever moves to the right. That allows the barrels to open 
and this one is a, a nice one. Since I didn't pull the triggers, the rounds didn't eject. Now I'm going to close the gun, again knowing that it's just snap caps. I can push the, tri the trigger forward and engage the bottom barrel, I think, first. Otherwise it's going to shoot the top barrel first. I might have that mixed up. It's been a while since I used this. So now I pull the trigger. Oops, I take it off of safety. Pull the trigger, and it fired one of the barrels. And now, let's say that I was hunting and I didn't have the opportunity to shoot the other barrel, but I want to change one of those rounds out. When I now open it, it's only going to eject the one that was actually shot. So I'm going to put my hand here to catch it, and it was the bottom barrel. So now I would put in a live round and close it again, and it didn't waste my time by ejecting both rounds. A less expensive shotgun will eject both rounds every time, and if I only had shot once, then that's just annoying. So uh, again, if I don't push the trigger forward, if I just use the trigger as is, Oh, take it off safety. Then I should have just the top barrel head fired. Now let's say I did want to shoot twice. I'm going to pull the trigger. Oops. Push it off safety. Pull the trigger. Pull the trigger again. And now when I open her up, both of them are going to pop out. So they push out with some force, which, you know, if you're on the training, if you're on the uh, sporting uh, field, that's important because you want to get those things out of there so you can get some new ones in there. Or if you're hunting, of course, again, it's very important to get those out of there so that you can get some new shells in there, uh, especially if you've found a good spot with a lot of birds. Uh, it does have, as you noticed, I keep forgetting because it's been a little while since I used this thing, it's got uh, a thumb type of safety. Um, when it's up, there's a little red dot that's visible. When you cover the red dot, the safeties are on, the triggers don't work. That's about it. Everything else on this would be taking it apart for maintenance. Um, there's no sights to adjust. There's a little bit of engraving. There almost always is on a over and under type of shotgun. And uh, this one happens to be wood. Not the best wood. I did get a crack down here, which I bought this used. So I'm not sure if there was already a crack when I bought it or not. I might not have paid enough attention when I bought it. Um, otherwise, fairly slim. Easy to tar acquire a nice target with it. Comfortable to shoot. And uh, compared to my pump shotgun that I used to use for shooting, uh, for hunting birds, uh, this one's just like driving a Cadillac compared to a pickup truck. Uh, again, because they're so easy to shoot and because they're so much so light, uh, it's just a pleasure to hunt with these. And it's uh, actually improved my scores when I'm at the shooting trap and skeet as well. So I think there's something to getting an over and under uh, if you're going to be doing any amount of um, either sport shooting or hunting.